Today we are going to learn about the development of the atomic theory. First we have Dalton. And Dalton proposed that different types of atoms called elements combine together to make matter that we see in our daily life. And based on Dalton, he basically said an atom looks like this sphere right here. A solid sphere that cannot be divided into a smaller part. So it is considered indivisible. However, later Thompson's found that there are positive and negative charged particles in an atom and Thompson basically discovered the existence of an electron. The significance of Thompson's discovery is that he discovered negative electrons. This also suggests the existence of a positive charged particle that later discovered. So if we look at Thompson's model here, we see the negative or evenly distributed out. Most importantly, it is being canceled out by the positive charges because atoms are neutral throughout. Later on, Rutherford discovered that atom has a very small, extremely dense, positive charged nucleus. And an atom is consists of mostly empty space. If we look at Rutherford model right here, here we have a positive, right, nucleus. For example, if we have a nucleus that about the size of a blueberry, it will has a volume of a football stadium. So that tells you how much empty space an atom has. In 1913, Bohr suggests that electrons move in a circular orbit at a fixed distance from the nucleus. So if we look at Bohr model, here is the nucleus, and we have the orbit right here, where the electrons are moved in circular motion at a fixed distance from the nucleus. Lastly, we have the electron cloud model. This model is proposed by Schrodinger. Unlike Bohr, Schrodinger is saying that there is a specific region in the electron cloud, like in this region right here and this region right here, you will have a higher chance of finding electron there. So electrons are not moving in a circular orbit like Bohr model, and within that region of the electron cloud, you have a very high probability of finding an electron. Lastly, we have Heisenberg uncertainty principle that describe in this equation right here. Now, one thing you need to know about this equation is that you have two variables. One is the uncertainty of position, that means the location of electron. Then we have the uncertainty of momentum, okay, of electron. So based on this equation itself, it has two variables, but you can only solve one variable at a time. So what does that mean? That means the more you know about the position of electron, the less you will know about the momentum of electron. Or the other way around, the more you know about the momentum, the less you know about the position of electron. Because you can only solve for one variable at a time. 